Hi, Ted Padova here once again. In this video, I want to talk about a few things related to radio buttons and checkboxes and discuss the similarities and differences between the two field types. I've noticed on YouTube there are some videos that talk about how you can convert a radio button to a checkbox and how you should use one field type in one circumstance and another in a different circumstance. And both of those are really untrue, and I'll prove that to you in this video when we get into talking about setting up the properties for each of these field types. As you can see on screen here, I have a PDF form. And the first thing I want to do is talk about actually creating one of the field types. Let's go to Edit over here. And I'm going to pick my checkbox field. And I'm going to come in. Notice that I've got a default size. If I just click, I'll create a field that size, like so. Now I'm going to get away from that and get another checkbox field. And notice that if I want to create a perfect square, I cannot hold the shift key down and drag. I press shift and drag, and you see nothing happens there. And when I let go, just that default size is appearing on my form. So if I want to size it up now, I can hold the shift key down and I create a perfect square. And if I just click and drag, what I will do is just uh, create a rectangle. So that's basically just the construction of the checkbox field. And let's take a look at the properties over here. The first thing I'm going to do is offer a name here. So I'm going to put CHK for check, for checkbox. Let's get that right. And let's take a look at the general properties. These properties are very much identical to the same properties that I used when I described uh, all about text fields, which is a video that you can see in my channel. So I'm not going to really go through in detail and explain all of this to you. Uh, it's pretty well outlined in that other video. If I go to appearance, I can choose to set the border color and the fill color and choose line thickness and line style, all of which I also discussed in my previous video on text fields. In terms of font, you see that there's no way to change this font. This is just a fixed font that will always appear for both radio buttons and checkboxes. It's called Adobe Pie, and that relates to the symbols that appear when you enable either a checkbox or a radio button. I can choose the, the size of the font by opening up this drop-down menu and choosing a size, or if I just leave it as auto, then Acrobat will automatically choose the size to fill the actual checkbox or radio button. Position, I described also in the text field, the file that I uh, uploaded to my channel describing check fields. This is just the coordinates of a field that you have on screen. So when I, you see this field that I have selected, these are the coordinates. Notice that it, when I click this form field down here, notice these values will change. So I click and you can see the change is there. It's just getting the XY coordinates for the position of that field on the page. And that's helpful if you want to create a JavaScript to add a field to a, a PDF document and you need to know the coordinates. So it's more of an informational thing than it is to actually use and uh, position your field because you can just click and drag those around. Over on options, this is where we have a difference between checkbox radio buttons and other field types. In both checkboxes and radio buttons, you have a checkbox style and you have an export value. So I can choose a style here. Let's say I want to choose something like a square. And I have an export value is yes. I'll duplicate this field. And I'll call this check new. So I have this field now as a new field. 
this one is called check so they have different names now when I come in and I click on those fields I can enable both if I change this name back to check they have the same name and then I come over to options and I give this a different export value and herein lies the issue where if you want to make check boxes appear like radio buttons this is what you need to do you need to have the same name and a different export value for each one of the fields in that group so let's say no here and let's go over to preview and you'll notice that when I click on one the other one is disabled click on one and the other one is disabled that's exactly the same behavior that you find with radio buttons now what are the differences between radio buttons and check boxes the first thing is there are two different design issues and one function that is different between radio buttons and check boxes. Other than that, everything else is identical. The first design issue is if I have no border assigned to a radio button, let's, these are radio buttons here, and if you take a look at appearance, you see border is transparent. So the border for the default for every field except the one that has a circle for the button style. This one is button style is circle. All of these others are all the other different styles here. Check, cross, diamond, square, and star. Check, cross, diamond, square, and star are right here. This one is called circle or it's defined as circle. So you can see that in my preview mode here you see there's a circle that appears here. So that's one major design issue. A export value of circle will show you a graphic that appears as a circle. The other design issue is, and this is just very slight, the check boxes or the, the radio buttons that have uh, other than a circle defined for the style, you can see that the left side and the top have a little darker color than the right side and the bottom. Those are the two different design issues. The other issue is if I click on one of these radio buttons like so and then I try to click again I cannot deselect it. These are all check boxes down here. I can click on these and if I click again it's deselected. Therein lies the major difference between radio buttons and check boxes. Radio buttons cannot be disabled by clicking on the radio bu button that's already enabled. Okay, I have an enabled button here. If I click again, I cannot disable it. With a checkbox, I have a checkbox enabled here. I click on it and I can disable it. That is the major functionality difference between a radio button and checkbox. Everything else is the same. Now, if you take a look at these fields up here, just by looking at these, you cannot tell what are radio buttons and what are checkboxes. If I click on one, I click on the other one. One's enabled while the other's disabled. I click on one, I, and you can see that the appearance of these are practically identical. The only way you can tell is if I click on this button again, it doesn't get disabled. If I click on this one, it does get disabled. So you know right now the top row are check boxes and the bottom row as radio buttons. Down here I have a user needs to put in a name. Now in order for me to use an either or situation, in other words if I enable one checkbox and then disable the other one, that's an either or situation, you must have the same name. So if I take a look at these fields you can see that the name cb.age 
cb.age, cb.age, etc., etc. These are all the same name. The difference between these fields is they all have different export values. So if I click on the first one here, I go to options, you can see that less than 18 is the first checkbox. I go to the next one, it's 18 to 24. The next one is 25 to 40 and so on and so forth. So these checkboxes can be used to enable just a single value and not more than one. And it's a either or type of situation. If we take a look at this other group here where I have hobbies and activities, it says pick the top three. Well, if I have this on a form, I don't want a user to check more than three boxes. So I want to limit that to three only. You'll notice that if I click on one, click on another one, click on another one, and now if I attempt to click on a fourth one, a dialog box opens and it says you can check a maximum of three check boxes only. And the way that's handled is, let me go over here to my edit mode. You can see that I have a field over here. I'm going to open this field up. And in the general category, in the general tab, you can see that I have this field hidden and I also have it marked as read only. So the user can't type any information here and it's hidden so when the form is being viewed and filled out that field is invisible. What I do have is in the calculate tab I have a JavaScript. And don't worry if you're not a JavaScript programmer this is a very easy copy paste JavaScript if you have uh, check boxes that you want to limit the number of choices, you can just copy and paste this. The only thing that you need to change, the uh, there are three items actually. You see where it says CB up here? You'll notice that each one of my fields are called CB and a number. It's not a, it's not a parent-child relationship. It's not CB.1, it's CB1, CB2, etc., etc. So you need to change CB. If your fields are named category, you have category 1, category 2, category 3, you would supply category here instead of CB. You see also you have CB down here. So if your field name is category, you would type in category here and change this value as well. The other item is the number that you want to limit it to. So if I want to limit this to 5, type in 5 here. Now I can choose 5 and on the sixth one you'll see that that dialog box appears. So let's go here, uh, reset form, go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then the sixth one the dialog box opens. So it's just that simple. It's a very easy copy paste JavaScript where you only have to change three items. I have this file uploaded to my server and there's a link in the description below the video where you can download this and then you can just keep that JavaScript handy in case you need it for one of your forms. So let me just say one more thing. In terms of JavaScripts, you can add JavaScripts to these just like you do to button fields. In this particular case, I have show fields and hide fields. Those could be buttons. They could be checkboxes and radio buttons. Either one is fine. You can add a, a JavaScript. You'll notice that. Go back to preview. If I go uh, show fields is showing the fields. If I go to hide fields, you can see that I hide. Uh, I didn't set it up to hide these fields, just the other ones here. So you can see that there. there's no way I can click. These are all hidden. I can go back to show fields and now these fields are available. Okay, go to reset form. So that's it. I hope that you get something out of this and understand a little bit more about radio buttons and checkbox fields. Be aware that they are totally identical with the exception of just three items, two of those being design issues in the appearance of the field type on a form. And the other one is functionality, whereas you cannot deselect 
a radio button once it's enabled. It's, once it's enabled, the only thing you can do is to either reset the form or to clear the field. And uh, I have another video I'm going to create adding a lot of information related to resetting fields and buttons and, and total forms and things of that sort. I'm going to upload that in a, in a short time. So I hope this is helpful. Once again, this is Ted Padova wishing you all the very best in all your acrobat activity.